Hey guys, welcome back to Creativity and Inspiration. If you're new, welcome. I'm so happy you found us. I'm Lisa, and again, this is Creativity and Inspiration. How's everybody doing? It is Saturday. This is our mask making video. What is it? Should you do it? Is it right for you? And how do I do it? So I've got a lot of great ideas for you. But before we get started, I thought I would share. I have opened Friday, Saturday, and yes, I went ahead and opened Sunday on the Advent calendar from Arteza. So I thought I would share that with you. Also, I went to an estate sale and got a few things there. And I thought I would share a mini haul with you too. And then we'll jump into today's video. So on Friday, I got this little pot of gouache paint. It's a gouache paint tub. I don't know, well, I found my glasses. Yeah, it doesn't say whether it's acrylic, if it's just gouache. I think it's just gouache since it doesn't say acrylic. It doesn't say the color, but as you can see, it's kind of a mustardy color, like a honey mustard color, not a yellow mustard. It's like a honey mustard color, which I use a lot of honey mustard. I just don't know these tubs in me. I had that whole thing of tubs and I spilt it more than once, so I had to get rid of it. Anyway, today's, um, today's advent calendar was this beautiful metallic blue acrylic paint. I am super excited since I love acrylic paint. And then Sundays is another little round canvas, which is so cute. I just love these. I still haven't found the little square ones I have, but as soon as I do, I'll show everybody. So that was the advent calendar, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I promise that's all I've opened. I There's still the rest of the days, which is exciting. Okay. What else? Oh, the haul. Yes, I went to the estate sale. And I was going to show you, I didn't get very much, just a couple of things. Okay. So, oops. So I got my grandmother's quilting stands. And I am going to make a quilt. That's one of the accomplishments I have set, or one of the goals I've set for myself for 2024. So just so happens this estate sale I went to today, there was tons of fabric. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't ready to pick fabric, which was a shame, but I've noticed a lot of estate sales have had a lot of fabric. So probably when I get ready to get it, they won't, but anyway. But they did have this amazing quilt cutting fold out measuring board thing. So I got this, if nothing else, it'll give me a nice hard firm surface to cut on on the floor and if it helps me measure we all know I need that so I'm excited about this it is cardboard so it cannot go out in my garage but that's fine I have a spot right there I got this and I'm gonna do some art with this I see this as an art piece I actually have a bigger one too out in the garage and they're both gonna be part of my um woman's art show that I'm going to work on after I finish the one I'm working on now. So this is going to be an art piece. And then I got these cute stamps. Oh my gosh, look at those. How cute. And it was actually 25% off at $3. But look how cute. And look at this. They're like brand new. I don't know if you can see in there, but they are like brand new. They look awesome on the back like I don't think they've been used very much and they're all they're all just like that can you see that they're all brand new so whatever 25% off of three dollars is and really I got it because of the little poodle because he didn't know both Sam and Henry are part poodle I then got these inks and I thought they were just inks but these are fabric inks so we are going to see these on some canvas. I've never seen an artist do that. So I'm going to try it out and see how they react on canvas and what I can do on top of them. So that's probably going to be in an art video coming up soon. 
I also got these artistic blending chalks that I thought would be fun for use in journals, also in my sketchbook. And there were so many pretty colors. Lastly, I got these little trays. I got five for a dollar. And I thought, I'm trying to get better organized. And I thought, I have my paint, a big old tub down there. And it's hard to find colors. So I thought I would at least try to organize a little bit. And these are the start of that. I don't know if they're really a good idea or not. But I'm going to try. So this was my haul. I'm pretty excited by it. That was it. And then I got really, really weak. Like, I don't have diabetes. I'm not, like, a diabetic. But I get low blood sugar a lot, which is probably my complex regional pain syndrome. And while I was shopping at the estate sale, I got, you know how you start to feel shaky, like you got, you've got to eat? One thing that threw me off was I slept late this morning. So I've been off all day. Like, my time is off. Like, even now, I thought it was 2. And it's three. So I've been off all day and I didn't realize it was noon and I hadn't eaten yet. So I had to go eat and then I went by and picked up some books at the library and came home. But now we're going to do mask making. What is it? Should you do it? And I'm going to show you some examples. So what is mask making? Mass making is when you make a lot of one thing at one sitting. You're trying to get ahead. You're trying to build up a stash. So when you're putting together a journal, you don't have to make each individual little thing. A lot of people make tags, pockets, journal cards, okay? Those things they will make in mass. Why should you do this? Well, it does save time, obviously. Why shouldn't you do this? Because everything looks the same. Even, even if, okay, because it, when you make them and you decorate them fully, okay, they're all going to look the same, but I'm decorating them different, you might say. But because you're making them all at the same time, they're all going to look very, 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 very similar. Even if the subject is different, the style will be all the same. And that's fine. Some people love doing that. Other people don't. An example, what would you mask make? Something like this book pocket right here, okay? This would be a mass make. You could sit down and fold up book pages, ink them, and have a bunch of blanks ready to go. If I was going to do that, and I don't mass make, but some people would stop here, okay, and just make up the plain book pocket, stick them away, and then when they need them, pull them out and decorate them for whatever they're doing. And that's the way I would do it if I mass made. Some people will go ahead and decorate them all the way, but they're generic decorated, if that makes sense. It's not for a sewing journal or a Christmas journal or a Victorian journal or grunt. It's, it's just generic decorations or spring bird journal. Okay, it's just generic. I like things to be very specific. Some people don't, and that's fine. Nothing I am saying, I am saying bad about anybody. Remember, like I say all the time, everybody is different. Everybody creates different. Everybody has different visions of how they see something. So if you're mass making, you can make a bunch like this. You can make a bunch like this. Something else that you could mass make would be like little hangy things like this strips of paper on ball pens with a button that can be very generic or it can be very um, specific depending on which papers you use this came out of a halloween journal that somebody sent me this is something i made it's very generic you could make a bunch of these up 
Hold on. I can't tell if these are in. You can make a bunch of these up. All I did was take a tag and put a ticket on it and another little tag and that's it. Then later I could come back and decorate these. Okay, so this is an example of mass making. Another example of mass making is just this piece of fabric. It has, I mean this piece of paper. This side's blank with some fabric. This side's sewn around and has some stamps. But this could go into any journal and I could very much make this specific to any theme. Another example of mass making would be just to paint a bunch of tags. You could paint them different colors, all the same colors, but you sit down and you paint them. You're getting the, that step out of the way. Somebody sent me this. I think this is the actual cardboard the tag's made out of. They stitched around it. They put coffee dyed paper on the back. And then when I get ready to use this, I can use it plain or I could make it specific. I could even decorate this side. So that's an example of mass making. This is an example of mass making. Again, I didn't make this somebody. It was in some journal or some flow journal swap that I got. But as you can tell, this is just glued on, but that's all there is. So you could take this, you could stitch around the butterfly. You could add some paint on it, put some white spack, you know, drips on it, whatever. So this is just, you could glue a bunch of different pictures on tags and finish them later. So that's an example of mass making. The last one I'm gonna show you is one I did. It's like a specimen slide. Okay, but this isn't really in finished form. You could take this, put different paper around it, put writing around it, whatever, but you could make a bunch up like this and then have them when you need them, okay? So mass making is prepping something either all the way or base the base of it and then you take it all the way at a later time and what which way you go whether you go here or here is up to you let's say we have our little let's say we have our little tag here now I'm ready to put this in a journal that I'm creating. And my journal is about flowers springtime. Because yes, I know it's winter, but I'm always all about the I'm always all about the flowers. So what can I do to make this a finished thing product? A finished tag. Well, you would decorate it up. That's where like your your colorful papers come in. Or your images from books or magazines. That's where your 3D elements like flowers and butterflies come in. That would be how you would take that plain mass made tag to the next level. Now, if you were, let's say, creating a journal, a spring journal, and you wanted to make a bunch of things for it at one time, then you definitely could. If you're working on a journal and you're like, oh, I'm working on this journal and I just want to make all of this at one time, then I, I'll go on to, you know, so in the signatures and blah, blah, blah. Could you? Sure. How would you do that? Well, as you saw, you can use book pages, you can use guest checks, or you can just use a piece of plain cardstock. And I'm going to show you how you could use some plain cardstock to create a bunch of tags, journaling cards, belly band, tuck spot, and I'm also going to show you how even though you're creating different items, you're creating them all from the same sheet, even if you created guest checks and they're all individual visuals, they're all gonna look the same because you're doing it at the same time. But it's fine. That's fine too. Let me show you how 
I'm going to use the one sheet of cardstock and I'm going to show you how you could create a great base for your spring journal and then I'm going to show you how you can go ahead and take all of those to the next level so all you have to do is cut out the shapes and you're ready to go. So come in closer for this part. For this part it's really easy. I'm just going to take a bunch of my scrap pieces of paper which are our book pages, map pieces, pattern pieces, and just any other pieces of paper that I have laying around. And we're going to layer them on my cardstock. Okay? And we're, we're going to glue them all down. And I'm going to tear them because I just like the torn edge. And I'm just, oops, I'm just going to place them down. And then I'll come back and glue it all down in a second. And if you notice, I'm using scraps that are really thin. And that's fine. That's why I save a lot of paper because I do go back and use it. You can use bigger sheets if you want to cover it 100%. That's up to you. I'm just really just trying to get it all covered here. Just remember when you use book pages, you want to make sure they're appropriate. I think the other day I showed you one that said war that, you know, depending on what it's for, may not be very appropriate or appreciated by your audience. And remember your base paper, this in this case, the white cardstock, doesn't have to be covered 100%. It can be covered just a little bit or it can be covered 100%, whatever you as the creator want. All right, I'm going to go off camera and glue all of these just pieces of paper down. That's what it looks like. And that's how it's going to look when I come back. So I'll be right back after I glue all of this down on my piece of cardstock. Okay, guys. Once you get to this spot, you can stop totally. And you could keep this cardstock with the base papers glued to it. And save this for when you're ready to cut out tags, journaling cards, whatever. So you could stop here, put this away, and then next time you're ready to make tags or whatever, you could pull this out and cut them out and decorate them. Or you could keep going from here, whether you have a specific journal in mind or you just want to keep going. So let's say you just want to keep going. Well, we've put our base papers down. And what are our base papers? They're our music paper, our book pages, or any type of accounting papers. They're inside of envelopes, maps, coffee stain papers, and their patterns. Okay, so these are all our base papers. This is our first layer, whether we're making tags or doing mixed media, whatever. This is our base layer. So after we get our base layer down on our cardstock sheet of paper, if you want to keep going in your mass making, then you would come in with your colorful layer. And it can be like this beautiful tissue paper with paint on it that I got from somebody. It could be this. It's like almost a fabric on paper, this. It could be scrapbook paper. It could be paint if you wanted to come in with paint at this point. Whatever you want to do, the colorful layer goes on now. And it could be a combination of all three of those things, okay? So just to give you an idea, I'm going to put down a little bit of this splattered blue tissue paper. This tissue paper is beautiful. And I like it because you can still see through it, but it's got the paint on it too, which adds texture. Okay? And I'm just going to put down a little bit, and I'm going to put it like that. You could put more down if you wanted to. You could just put this down. You could put a layer of paint, like I said, this, whatever. I'm gonna come in with more of this blue tissue paper. 
I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna put the blue tissue paper down super fast. And yes, I use Elmer's glue because it's easy, it's cheap, and believe it or not, it holds. I did do a glue comparison video. I will put the card above if you wanna watch that. I think I compared 12 glues. And yes, I don't like glue. I normally don't do glue, but that's what works well for this. So, I just love the paint splatters on here. You put it down. I'm going to tear that off right there. And I'm going to throw it right here in the center. Okay. So, once you get the next colorful layer down, then you can come in after it's dry and cut out what you want at this point, okay? So you've got the biggest layers down, you've got the base layer down, and you've got the colorful layer, layer down. Now what I like to do before I put on the frosting or the finishing layer, I like to cut it out and then I'll finish it once it's in its shape, whether it's gonna be a tag, a journaling card, or whatever. Something else you could also do at this point is sew it. You could take your sewing machine and run some designs all over it. You could do that. I prefer to do that after I cut out my shape. So I'm gonna cut out, I'm gonna cut out a tag real quick just to show you what you can do. I was gonna use one of these. Okay, where'd it go? Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Okay, I'm just gonna use my tag pattern here and I wanna make sure I get some of this beautiful blue paper. You could cut out whatever you want. You could use a um, punch and punch out a shape if you wanted to. You know, be you. We're all different, we all create different. Just do what you feel comfortable doing. I would say it is a good idea to use cardstock or a light cardboard for this because that is a lot of glue and it does get quite heavy. And you don't want your paper that's supposed to be supporting your everything to collapse. Now you could come in with some more paper. You could add some lace. You could come in with our flower here, which I think looks beautiful right there. And we might come in with our butterfly. And I'm gonna put our butterfly kind of down here because this color right here is very similar to my butterfly. So I wanna tie my butterfly color in like that. And then this, this would be my tag, see? So if we just stop here, put this in a drawer, and when we know what our journal is, pull it out, then all we have to add is our frosting. In this case, it's the flower and the butterfly. You could also cut out your shapes, do your sewing, and put your shapes in a drawer. So you could cut out, say, you could get, you know, figure out how many tags you need, or are you short on tags, or what do you hate making the most? And cut all those shapes or punch all those shapes out, save them for when you have a journal ready, and then decorate them with the frosting. That's totally up to you as well, however you go about it. But that's what mass making is. And most people do mass making to save time. Maybe they, you know, have a lot of journals they make because they sell them on Etsy, you know, whatever. Maybe people just mass make because they really hate making the ephemera portion, which is the tags, the journaling cards, the belly bands, all of that. So they do this so they can enjoy the signatures and all of that. I also talked about how you can fold up your signature pages and just stick folded blank signatures together somewhere. That's a form of mass making as well. 
And that's my preferred method of mask making. I like to just have all my signatures pre-folded. So when I get ready to make a journal, I just go pick out however many signatures I want. They're already folded and created. And that way I can just start making my ephemera and all of that. But everybody's different. You can also cut, you know, a tag shape out of here. You could use tags on here as a part of the layering. You know, just however you layer, however you finish a tag, that's what you should do. This was just to give you an overall idea of what mass making is, the different stages of mass making, and where you can stop or start, and my personal opinions on it, which that's all it is. So guys, that was all about mass making, what it is, why people do it, and to give you an example of how to do it if you've never done it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please be sure and give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button with that little bell. We are desperate, desperately trying to get to a thousand subscribers by December 31st and we are 196 subscribers away. Come on guys, we can do it. So thank you for being here. I will see you on Monday. Take care. Have a good rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.